I bet you almost forgot about the tragedy that shook America in 2009. The story of Travis, the chimpanzee that was kept as a pet and raised as if he was a child. I wish I could say this was a heartwarming story, but it's very far from it. Travis was born near Festus, Missouri, October 21st, 1995. Sandra and Jerome Harold purchased Travis for $50 thousand dollars. The breeder they bought him from took Travis away from his mother when he was only three days old. Sandra decided she was going to name her new baby chimp after her favorite music artist, Travis Tritt. The Heralds raised Travis at their home in Stamford, Connecticut. Travis was the family's constant companion. They treated him as if he was their own actual child. He would often accompany them to work and even on their shopping trips into town. Sandra and Jerome owned a towing company. Travis would pose for photos and ride around in the tow truck. He was their little mascot. Travis became quite well known around town. He had been known to greet police officers they encountered while towing cars in town. Because he grew up in a family's household and even accompanied them every single day to work, Travis had been socialized with humans since birth. A neighbor even said he used to play around and wrestle with Travis. He added that Travis always knew when to stop and always paid very close attention to his owner. He even stated, he listens better than my nephews. I just don't know why he would do that. When questioned about the horrible incident that happened in 2009, Travis could do so much more than you'd expect. He could open doors using keys, dress himself, water plants, feed hay to Sandra and Jerome's horses, and even had the occasional glass of wine. His favorite thing was ice cream, so much so that he even learned the schedule of the passing ice cream trucks. That's adorable. He was smart enough where he could even log into the computer to look at pictures. He even watched television using the remote. His favorite thing to watch was baseball. There was even several occasions where Travis actually drove a car. Sandra and Jerome raised and taught Travis as if he was their actual son. Unfortunately, in 2000, Jerome and Sandra's only child ended up passing because of a tragic car accident. To make things even worse, Jerome passed of cancer in 2004. All Sandra had left was Travis. Because of these losses, Sandra poured all her time and affection into him. She said she felt like he was all she had. Sandra slept and bathed with Travis and was quoted saying after the incident, I'm like hollow now. He slept with me every night. Until you've eaten with a chimp, and you bathe with a chimp, you don't know a chimp. But everything changed, and the completely unexpected happened. February 16, 2009, around 3.40 p.m. That's when everything took a turn for the worst. Travis left the house with Sandra's car keys like he had done many times before. She called Charla. Charla had been a close friend for 30 years and even worked at the towing company with Sandra. Sandra asked Charla for help because she knew Travis. She had known him since he was a baby. Despite Charla knowing Travis since he was a baby, she always had a fear of him. His strength and his size always kept her on edge. What happened next changed her life forever. Charla knew that one of Travis's favorite things was his Tickle Me Elmo toy. So she went inside the house and grabbed it. She thought she could use it to help encourage Travis to go back inside. When Charla approached Travis with the Tickle Me Elmo toy, no one knew that this would be Travis's reaction, which led to this horrifying 911 call. It's time for 911, where's your emergency? Oh, this is Sandy, 231 Rock, Rock Crimmon Road. What's Send the problem? The police. Send the police. What's the problem there? The, the chip killed my my friend. What's the problem with your friend? Oh, please. What's the problem with your friend? I need to know. Send the police up with a gun. With a gun. Hurry you're, you're up. You're off the gun. Please hurry up. He's killing my girlfriend. What is the problem? He's killing my friend. Who's killing your friend? Chip, my chimpanzee. Oh, your chimpanzee please. is killing your friend. Yes. He, he ripped her apart. Hurry up! With a gun. Hurry up, please! There's someone on the way. With guns, please! He shoot him! What is the monkey doing? Tell me what the monkey's doing. He, he ripped her face off! He ripped her face off? He tried to shine at me! Please, please! Okay, hurry. I need you to calm down a little bit. They're on the way. Can you push yourself away? I don't want the monkey Get attacking you. Please, hurry up! Listen to me! Uh, they're on the way, ma'am. They gotta shoot him, please! Please, hurry, hurry! You're there with your friend. I need you to help your friend. Can you go help your friend? I can't. He tried to attack me now. Is he still there with your friend? Yes. Okay, so then back off. Then don't get any closer, okay? They're already on the way. 
please. If the monkey moves away from your friend, let me know, okay? So we can try I to help your friend. No, no, I can't. She's dead. She's dead. Why Why are you saying that she's dead? She's dead. He ripped her apart. He ripped what apart? Her face? My, everything. He ripped her apart? Listen, I think I'm going to fight. I think I'm going to pass no, out. No, just breathe, okay? I'm going to stay I with you on the phone until they get there. Listen, <laughs> please, hurry. Please, please, hurry. <laughs> oh, my God. They got to have their guns out. They, they got to have their guns out. Listen to me. Oh, my God. Is this your monkey or whose monkey yes. is it? It's your monkey. No, it's mine. He's how just, how do you know how big is he? How, yes, how many 200 pounds? Four hundred. Two hundred. Two hundred pounds. Listen to me, please. Where are they? Where are they? And he's a chimp, correct? Yes. Where Where are they? They're going your way. They're going as fast as they can your way. Okay. Please, please go faster. Please, please, Derek. Please, please, <laughs> please. Is the monkey still by your friend, or can you get close to your friend? He's eating her. He's eating her. Please. God, oh, please. Okay, I need you to calm down for me. I know it's hard, okay? I know it's hard. But they're going as fast as they can your way, okay? Oh, my God, please. Oh, please. They tell them they got to shoot him because I tried stabbing him, and he's not, and it made him worse. Okay, please. Senator. Have them shoot them. They will. Sandra, I already have the fire department close by, okay? So as soon as the police gets there, the fire department is going to move in, okay? The fire department can't move in yet, but as soon as the police officers show up... Please tell them. Shoot them because he's going to try to attack me now. Just breathe, Sandra. Shoot them! Shoot them! Sandra, stay in your car. Shoot them! Sandra, I need you to stay in your car. Shoot them, please. I tried stabbing them. And, and he's hurt now too, so so he's gonna attack anybody. I can't get out of this car. Lock your doors on your car and stay it, there with me. It don't matter. It don't matter. It don't matter. He will rip the doors. Right Sandra, open. just do what I'm please, telling you to. Stay in the car. The police officers will please, handle it. Please tell him to shoot him. <laughs> please tell him. Please tell him to kill him, please. They did, Sandra. They're shooting at him already. Okay. But he's not dead. I know. They will continue until he's dead, okay? I just need you to stay on the phone with me and breathe. He's not dead. He's not dead. He's not dead. Oh, God. Sandra thought her friend Charla was dead. During this vicious attack, Sandra tried to stop Travis. At first, she tried hitting him over the head with a shovel. When that didn't work, she ran into the house and got a butcher knife. She started stabbing Travis and screaming at the top of her lungs, begging him to stop. Sandra is quoted saying about the attack, for me to do something like that, put a knife in him, was like putting one in myself. She said Travis turned to her and looked at her in a way as if to say, Mom, what did you do? When Sandra made the 911 call, they actually thought it was a hoax. It wasn't until she started screaming, he's eating her, that they actually sent help. Emergency medical services arrived first, but they waited for police before they approached the house. When they arrived, Travis ran directly for the police car. He tried to open up the locked passenger door, and when he couldn't, he smashed a side view mirror. He then ran around to the driver's side door. It was unlocked and he was able to open it. It was at that point that Officer Frank Chiafari shot Travis several times. After the shots were fired, Travis ran directly into the house, which is where he was found. He was laying next to his cage, dead. The emergency crew described Charla's injuries as horrendous. Within the following 72 hours after the attack, Charla underwent seven hours of surgery, and that was just on her face and hands and it took four different teams of surgeons. The hospital provided counseling to the staff members that initially treated Charla because of the severity and the horrific story surrounding Charla's wounds. During the attack, Travis completely ripped Charla's face off. Yes, her entire face. Oh, but that's not all. She lost her hands, her nose, her eyes, and even her lips. Probably the most horrifying part, Charla was completely conscious when she arrived at the hospital. She was aware of everything happening. She also suffered from significant brain tissue injuries. Pieces of Travis's teeth were stuck in her bones. Doctors were able to reattach Charla's jaw, but they also had to deliver the news 
that Charlo would be blind for the rest of her life. Travis completely destroyed her eyes. Her injuries made her a possible candidate for an experimental face transplant surgery. Her family started a trust fund to pay for her ridiculously high medical bills and to take care of her daughter. It wasn't until Charla went on the Oprah Winfrey show on November 11th of 2009 that she revealed to the world the severity of the injuries she went through. On May 28th, 2011, Charla underwent the transplant surgery. She received the donated face and hands. The hand transplant was initially successful, but unfortunately Charla developed pneumonia in her healing process. Doctors were forced to remove her newly donated hands due to infection and poor circulation. But wait, what did they end up doing with Travis? Well, there's a standard procedure with any animal attack. Unfortunately, you have to cut the animal's head off and send it to be tested for rabies, which is exactly what they did with Travis's head. And they sent his body to the University of Connecticut, where they performed an autopsy. Travis's head tested negative for rabies, but his body tested positive for Xanax. Toxicology reports confirmed a statement given by Sandra the day of the attack. She said she had given Travis Xanax laced tea, which this could have possibly fueled the aggression. Xanax is a short acting anti-anxiety medication, but in some people it can cause hallucinations, aggression, rage, and mania. So it's possible since we're so closely related, the same thing could have happened to Travis. After all the testing was done, Travis's remains were cremated at the All Pets Crematorium in Stanford. On May 20th, 24, 2010, just 15 months after the vicious attack, Sandra Harold died suddenly. She was 72 years old. Her attorney, Robert Golger, released this statement after her death. Miss Harold suffered a series of heartbreaking losses in the past few years, beginning with the death of her first and only daughter who was killed in a car accident, then her husband, then her beloved chimp, Travis, as well as the tragic maiming of her friend and employee, Charla Nash. In the end, her heart, which had been broken so many times before, could take no more. 